clouds constitute for over a thousand percent of the Earth's atmosphere, and to many they are an innocent way of keeping us safe from the harmful, carcinogenic rays of the sun. But behind those fluffy, floating, marshmallow sun cushions lies a far more sinister purpose. Something that may change the way we look at this world forever. The origins of this tale start in 1802, where a young man, or possibly woman, named Luke Howard and their friend, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, discovered the very first cloud. The two carried strong backgrounds in medicine, which naturally lent to their groundbreaking geological experiment. In science, the border between the earth and the sky is known as the horizon, named after its Spanish inventor, Manuel Horizontales. Howard believed that by using his eyesight, to look above the Earth's horizon, he may be able to witness a greater scope of the atmosphere, previously unreached by prior scientific analysis. There was much controversy surrounding his esoteric concept. Those who had before now kept their eyes firmly beneath the horizon's safeguard, watched in awe as he looked up and saw something that would change the way we look at this world forever. Before long, the world would come to recognize over 4,006 unique types of clouds. But to better understand the different types of clouds that Howard and Lamarck recognized, we're heading straight to the source. Local politicians would want you to think that these factories in the dark and atmospheric hamlet of Birmingham, England, are just jutting steam or smoke as a byproduct of mechanical engineering. But in fact, these highly specialist factories are actually multi-trillion pound government funded laboratories responsible for over 69% of the unusual cloud styles we see floating above us today. But why would our government shunt billions of pounds of taxpayer money into something so mundane as variable cloud production? Since the invention of the internet in 2009, internetologists have been researching new and more efficient methods for storing the vast amounts of data that over 85 trillion people and women exchange every day. Here, at these government classified laboratories in Birmingham, those internetologists began to collaborate secretively with geologists to develop new, foolproof ways of storing and securing our data to ensure that it doesn't end up in the wrong hands something that has not transpired since World War I. <coughs> of course, back then you didn't have radios or your computer webs. Now, when the time came to send a message over to Charlie Brigade, we used uh, trained seagulls, or in some cases, expertly trained salmon, uh, to, to swim our messages across the channel and keep them from the crowd's fingers. Uh, of course, we, we had tried it with horses, but they, they kept drowning. We caught up with geologist Professor Rupert Muller-Rice, who explained how this revolutionary data storage system transpired. Yes. Well, it was back in 1993, myself and six other highly respected geologists were kidnapped and taken to a remote government research facility in Bristol city centre, just behind the public toilets. We were briefed, told that our loved ones now do us as dead. Naturally, it was terrifying. I, I was a dungeon master to a wholly developed four-player Dungeons & Dragons quest and I was fairly sure I had left my oven on. Well, on God strip searched us, then led us naked and by gunpoint into a room with just a bathtub. A man, still in the front of the room, called himself Professor Thunder Lizard. He told us that he had been involved in a high-class US military experiment called Project Harp, a top-secret program that meant data could be stored by the influence of satellites in space that could not only control our weather, but also our thoughts. Thunder Lizard went on to explain that the satellites were only a decoy against foreign intelligence. 
The satellites actually use microwaves to mutate particles in the clouds below and allow complete control over their shape, movement, temperature and even their rain patterns. Britain, 1992. Project HARP is established by the Planet Earth National Intelligence Society, a subsidiary of Binary Universe Triangle Facility United Kingdom Extraterrestrial Reconnaissance Society. Today, Penis operate over a thousand of these cloud factories all over the United Kingdom. But how is it that these factories are used to store, and in many cases, steal your data? When you or I log into MyFace or Spacebook through our mobile telephones, data is transmitted into the air through something called 3G. The G in 3G stands for gallons, as 100 gigabytes of data equates to roughly 3 gallons of water. This equates to around 100 megabytes of data, safely stored within just one milliliter of water. As the data leaves our telephones, it pierces the water molecules found naturally in the atmosphere through a process called data osmosis and is then carried high into the air where covert satellites arrange our data into equivocal cloud shapes, each perfectly unique. Have you ever looked to the sky and wondered why sometimes clouds take unusual, even very obvious shapes? Many believe this may have something to do with the types of data stored on those clouds. Cloud psychic Robert Cabbage thinks that there is definitely a link between cloud formation and the nature of the information found inside it. There is definitely a link between cloud formation and the nature of information found inside it. Many believe that these frightening images are definitive proof that penis are using advanced harp microwave technology right now to manipulate and record all of our private data and pornography and for other nefarious activities such as mind control, missile deflection and even putting carry bags in the ocean to kill off our sea life. Peter Lovewilly believes he has managed to capture a recording of HARP technology in action. Oh yeah, now I've been following HARP for years. They all know me. On several occasions I've been followed covertly by men in fluorescent pink or yellow suits. I've had death threats, psychic attacks, storms seem to follow me everywhere I go. Their weapons utilise uh, many technologies, primarily electromagnetic pulses or EMPs, psychokinetic missile silos or PMS, and you know, largely like microwave radiation. The microwaves are concentrated and shut out like watery semen, uh, breaking the atmosphere like a thin piece of tissue. Harp is heard as omnidirectional sounds. Sometimes they sound like a lawnmower engine, sometimes like a garbage truck, but uh, mostly it sounds like an angry llama farting on a kitten. I recorded this sound about uh, three months ago. Harp is demonic, satanic, and if we continue to allow our world powers to serve the Dark Lord, then within the next five years we will see the uprising of Lucifer on Earth. The evidence is here. The Buddhist heathens are ravaged by quick floods of water, while Avika becomes an arid, waterless tomb. This is not the work of God, but a cruel irony forged from the furnaces of hell. We were born long before science was here not to sculpt the instruments of the devil. Simon 1660. Let them seek a man who is a skillful player of the harp, and it will come about when the evil spirit from God is on you. Project Help is an organization that may or may not be real. Do Harp know about me? Oh yeah. But they don't want me dead. I've actually received thousands of electronic letters asking me to join Harp. But um, well last week my computer got a virus and all my inbox was wiped clean. Otherwise I'd show you. But um, yeah, they're talking to me. Even right now I can hear them whispering in my head. Things, telling me to buy cigarettes at the supermarket, uh, which petrol station has the lowest price, which schools to burn down, just simple things. Whatever the method, it seems unlikely that Harp will relent, with paranormal weather events growing stronger every year. Will the government ever come clean about their top secret experiments? And to what end? For now, I guess we'll just keep blaming the weatherman.